Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. In today's video, we're going to be modding the LED light from an original NES that we replaced the 72 pin connector in in a previous video. Link to that one in the description. So let's head over to the workbench and see what we have to work on today. Here it is. And that's the LED we'll be modding. We're going to replace the normal red LED with a color changing one. So let's open this up. For that we have six Phillips screws to remove. Can't forget our bin. Once we have the top of the case off and collected everything, we have seven more Phillips screws to remove this metal casing. These are the same size as the other ones, so no worries about mixing them up. Now we have two more holding the board down. And six on the game bay. Well, pay attention. This screw here is different from the others. See, it's silver looking and is a little longer from the others. Once the board is free, we can remove the power and reset cord. It's this blue one hiding behind here. Careful not to pull on those wires. You don't want any of the pins coming out. From here, there is two more Phillips screws holding down these buttons. These are different from the others as well. One is hiding behind those wires, so we'll need to move them out of the way. Once removed, we can get the bulk of the console out of our way, as we won't be working on that part. This is our main focus here. The LED goes in there, and here's the LED itself. So we'll have to desolder these two spots here. If you don't have a desoldering station like myself, you can use some flux, not too much, but we will be cleaning up anything left on there. And here's the desoldering wire. This is pretty good at soaking up that solder. Being careful not to heat up the board too much. Once done with that, make sure to clean up and retain your soldering iron. Cleaning up of the board will be done with some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. Now we can try and remove that LED. It's in there pretty good. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I didn't get all the solder off those joints. Okay, now those leads are moving freely. So I'll use some needle nose pliers to carefully remove that LED. There it is. And we'll make sure that board is nice and clean with another wipe with our cotton swab from earlier. Clean and ready for a new LED. Here's the color changing LED. As you can see, it's a little smaller from the original. Don't worry about that. It won't be an issue. You'll notice one of the leads is longer than the other. That is the positive, shorter being the negative. But 
the markings on the board will show us the polarity. See how it looks like a little arrow? That's the way the current is moving through the board. We'll want to make sure that the positive goes in on the left here. Now we can gently bend this and get it into that plastic housing there. That will focus the light from the LED out through the front of our console. Once in, we can bend the leads on the other side so the LED doesn't want to fall out while we're soldering it in. And out of habit, I always bend those leads away from each other. Okay, now we can trim off the extra leads there. <laughs> that one hit something metal over there. Next, we'll add some flux to our solder joints. That will help the solder bond to the board. A little goes a long ways. Remember to always clean your soldering iron before use. When soldering, you don't want to use a lot, especially when the solder joints are this close together. We'll clean up our solder tip after use. And inspect our work. Looks good. We'll clean up again with some more alcohol and a swab, just to remove any excess flux still left on the board. Clean up a little here and grab the rest of the console. And before putting everything back together, I'm just going to test it out. Make sure everything works as it should. <laughs> Helps when we have a game in the console. Be careful because nothing is screwed down right now. It'll start off red, which is the normal color, but we'll soon start cycling through the other colors. I think that looks pretty cool. Once the console is unplugged, it's not a bad idea to drain those capacitors by hitting that power button one more time. Now we'll start putting everything back together. Again, remember that these screws are different from the others. Now for the game bay, we'll grab four of the normal screws and those two longer ones. I think that's right. Yep, four and two. Again, remember that this long screw goes in this spot here. I can't tell you how many times I've opened up these just to see it done wrong by others. Next, we can replace the two screws on the board here. Now replace the metal case and the seven screws that go along with it. We 
Once done with that, we can put the top half of the console back on, flip it over for our remaining six screws. Okay, we're done. Time to hook it up to a TV, turn the lights off, and see it in all its glory. It takes about 45 seconds to cycle through all the different colors. And there we go. Using a color changing LED, or you can use whatever color you want, that only costs us a few cents, and some basic soldering skills, we were able to mod the red light in our original NES. Now I hope you liked this video, and if you really enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, as it helps out me and the channel quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.